All right, guys, we're here with Omar Haleo. Uh, Mr. Haleo, how are you doing today? Feeling great. <laughs> Excellent, man. So Mission Hunter Pro number 58 goes down here tomorrow night in mm -hmm. Houston, Texas. Uh, you know, we have I've been watching your career for a long time, um, from an amateur all, all the way through, and, and more of always seeing you as an M this MMA fighter, this yes, big sir. prospect MMA fighter. But mm -hmm. in, over the last, I don't know, year or two, it seems, big focus on, on jujitsu. Mm -hmm. um, is that kind of where you're at in, in your career? Right now, I kind of want to just take what I can get. Um, my last MMA fight was a couple years ago, um, and it was my first loss as a pro, but I suffered a pretty bad eye injury. Uh, I'm still kind of feeling the effects of it, but I'm still actively looking to get MMA fights. Uh, right now, like I said, just trying to take what I can get. If it's a jiu-jitsu match, kickboxing, boxing, MMA, I, I just want to compete and stay active and stay not necessarily relevant, but just stay active and keep going. You know, it, it seems like forever now. Uh, mm -hmm. You fought one of my students as an amateur probably yeah, a decade Raul. ago. <laughs> yeah, like, like, and I remember the guy you were then, mm -hmm. even through now, you've always been this super respectful, super you, humble, um, amazing guy who, who, you know, what's one, what kept you grounded mm. and, and you've never had this condescending attitude like even when you're, you're just whipping somebody up man you've been super super humble and nice and moving forward what's what's kept you that mentality um i feel like uh going through a the many ups and downs that fighters go through i've had lots of many many peaks and valleys um, i've had many surgeries and setbacks that have kind of held me back from kind of pursuing you know my fighting career how i want to and it humbles you really you know whenever you get in there and uh you have to have two shoulder surgeries in a year and then you have two hernia surgeries and then you have your eye get bashed in like the first punch that's thrown in a fight you know <laughs> it humbles you after a while and right. you know it it uh it helps to kind of keep a, a grounded sensibility about yourself whenever you know everybody in here can can fight everybody that we go to shows with has a good you know martial arts background but to be I feel like I'm a true martial artist. You must be remain humble. You must remain respectful, and knowing your place, kind of. You know, um, for me personally, I like to try to keep the martial arts in mixed martial arts. That's why I always walk out with my karate gi. That's why I always, you know, kind of walk with my dad to the cage because he was my first teacher and still is my teacher. So I just try to keep those little traditions, I guess, with me, and that kind of helps me stay focused and not worry about the other outside. Now, you, you, just, you said your dad's still one of your teachers. Mm -hmm. Is that how you got started? Like, how did you get started yeah. in martial arts? Oh, man. So, uh, they, uh, my parents met when they were in college, and my dad was a black belt from uh, Kuwait. So, he's Palestinian, but he moved to Kuwait whenever he was, like, six or seven. Okay. And then uh, came over here to go to school, met my mom, and then uh, they opened up their first karate school in 1994. So I was two at the time. Oh, wow. And it was just like daycare, basically. Like, I had nowhere else to go. So my dad was like, you're going to start training. <laughs> right. And like, if you're here with us all day long, you're going to train. And, you know, when I was two, three years old, I was running around the school in diapers, but kicking and punching. And that's just kind of how it evolved. And then from there, got bored with uh, karate when I was a teenager. Just kind of got in that teenage phase. And right. Saw my first UFC. I was like 13, 14. And it was... Uh, Matt Hughes, BJ Penn won. Wow. And that completely changed everything. I was so flabbergasted with BJ being able to be this, like, chubby little Hawaiian kid, kind of look like me, <laughs> and then beat up this farm kid who yeah. was just, you know, really ridiculously strong. And since then, I've just been hooked, and it's been just a constant in my life every single day. Do you have a, a favorite fighter or grappler that you like to watch? Um, Favorite fighter... And it's always changing, uh, especially now with the way that the game has changed. It's always changing. But I guess my favorite fighter now to watch uh, currently is probably a uh, style bender. Okay. I love watching his fighting style. Jiu-Jitsu, hmm. I've always liked watching uh, old-school Jiu-Jitsu matches. I like watching old-school Draculino fights. I like watching uh, some old-school Henzo fights. Uh, like the old-school Gracie matches. But new, new guys, I really, really, uh, what's his name? Uh, Craig Jones is one. Okay. Uh, Gordon Ryan's pretty good. There's, you know, there's, it's always changing. So there's a lot of good guys. Uh, where can the fans learn more about you? Um, we have our website, TigersDenMartialArts.com. There's a little bio about my family and you know, how we started. Uh, there's my fights on YouTube, my Instagram, Omar Haleo Martial Arts. And that's pretty much it. I kind of stay low key, don't really <laughs> talk too much. But when I get in there, I like to put on a show. Excellent, man. Thank you so much for taking time to speak with us. I look forward to seeing you compete tomorrow. Thank you, Richard.